The biggest questions for the NFC North today. Shams will be here, NBA playoffs in full string. Uh, he'll be here to answer who's Jordan Poole and what was that last night. Lots of laughs with comedian and actor Maz Jabrani. He is here as well. Let's get it. Mr. Ronnie, YouTube comedy special, The Birds and the Bees. He is here in studio. I just met him. He's got a lot of great energy, so he will be out here. Uh, and I, you know, look what the cat dragged in, Matthew Hamilton. I went to the, uh, the old Lakers game last night. This year has been so amazing. I went to my first Knicks game, and I sat next to Baklava guy. And then I, and then I no. go to the Lakers <laughs> last night. I can't even tell you where, where they play. It's somewhere downtown in L.A. And it was, uh, it was an experience. <laughs> it sounds like it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you had uh, a few more celebrity sightings than just Bobby Bacala, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it it's very different. Awesome. Now, here's the thing. because I'm trying to think, like, Knicks game versus Lakers game, what you hear growing up when you watch it on TV and all that. Uh, Knicks game was a regular season game, but it was a track meet. It was Point of Palooza, if you can remember. And I was like, was Randall the yeah. greatest player alive? He put up, like, 75 <laughs> points in, like, the first half of this thing. And so there was a lot of screaming at the Knicks game. There's a lot of energy at the Knicks game. Yeah. There's a lot of just fans giving it their all and the energy – it's sort of incomparable. Then the Lakers is like a whole different vibe. And granted, it's the playoffs, but it is. There's just too much to look at. There's lights and beautiful dancers, and there's um, actors and actresses and models. And you're looking at like, do I know him? Is that the guy from? It's a whole thing. Jack Nicholson was in the house. They had like a whole intro, a mashup of clips from his uh, incredible career, and then they sort of showed him, and he and he gave a little pump up. And I sat there. I sat there at the Lakers game and I was counting the banners, you know? Because, like, I was at the yeah. United Center not long ago for something, not for FanDuel, but I was there for, oh, the Harry Styles concert. And you're, you know, you're at, you're in the building. You're at the United Center, so you're counting the banners and you're like, yeah, Chicago. And then I get to this Lakers game last night, first whatever, and I'm like, there's 17 of those things hanging there. It is unbelievable how good they are after being bad or when you think they're going to fall off a cliff, they contend again. It's a, it's a very, like, Patriots, Steelers, blue chip sort of packers -y vibe over there. It's very cool, very cool. Yeah, and I, I think that creates a little bit of a different vibe, too, when you've won that much versus the Knicks, who were, you know, as a Knicks fan, we're still waiting for that first uh, first championship yeah. in about 50 years. So uh, definitely creates a little bit of a different vibe. But, uh, but yeah, lights, I mean, the lights we all low. knew. Sorry, go ahead. I, I also am used to, you know, you get tickets to games, you don't really go, or, you know, you'll, <laughs> you'll kind of tell us you were there. For, but we actually know that you were there at the game. We have video evidence. Oh, uh, of it, which was was pretty cool to see so during this game. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Up in Adams, baby. And here we are today, the day after. And Shams will be on our show, and I'm sure he'll have a lot to make fun of uh, with that. But I have a lot to make fun of with him uh, breaking NFL news on draft day. Yeah. I was not happy. I was not happy with Shams. The All first right. time in my life. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will say the Knicks game is sort of rough. Everybody, like, comes in from the subway, and everybody sort of, it's just like, you know, everybody crowds in, and it's whatever. <laughs> the Lakers game is, like, the first time you take, uh, like, a Virgin Atlantic airline flight back in the day when it was like, wait, what is this cool house music? What is this? Like, the lights are low. There's, like, these purple lights. What's happening? The menu is different. Like, it's, it's very much that at the Lakers game. All class, all fun. And they pulled out a win last night in a very exciting playoff game that I was blessed to go to. So, uh, Hamilton, we'll talk to you in a little bit. I'm not going to say which one's better. Very different experiences checking out the Knicks. Regular season in a crazy game. And, of course, the Lakers game four in their win. And now they've got to see what they can do and maybe lock it up. What's the, what's the series now? 3-1? I'm talking basketball. It's amazing. But we're going to switch gears to the NFL uh, for a little bit here on a, a show because it's time to dig, dig into more unanswered Questions. We've been doing this division by division. We kicked it off yesterday in the NFC East. Now we go to the NFC North. It's their turn. And I want to start with the Bears. You know, I love Chicago. It's where I grew up. I love the direction the team's headed under Ryan Poles. I love it all. 
They're not yelling. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> I want everyone to yell at me today. Get to the question. Here's the question for Chicago. Is Justin Fields as good as we think? That's what it is. Plenty of reasons to be excited about Justin last year. We saw some awesome runs. They were explosive, highlight reel throws, big time fantasy performances, but the Bears still finished with the worst record in the NFL. I'm not saying that it's Justin's fault. I think the Bears roster was super flawed, especially when it comes to receiving core and the offensive line. I don't think that's the case anymore. Take a look at these additions. Oh, this makes my heart sing. The Bears made the trade for DJ Moore. They spent their first rounder on tackle Darnell Wright to strengthen the O-line. They add Robert Tunney. Deontay Foreman, Nate Davis. Listen, they took some skilled players in the middle rounds as well. So GM Ryan Poles, he's gone all in to try to support his guy. And that is a wonderful thing. And it's exactly what you want to see as someone from Chicago or if you're just a Bears fan from anywhere. But uh, it really puts it all on Justin. That's true. The Listen, we've surrounded you with all the support you need. If you can't thrive here, tough, okay? So while last year the feeling was kind of you know, we know this team isn't going to be a contender right now. We just want to see good things out of Justin. That was the whole, that's all I wanted last year. Now it's time to start winning some games. We need some W's in that column, okay? And that's uh, about way more than stats and it's about way more than highlight reels. And I will say this, I believe in fields and I do think Chicago found their quarterback and has him. But there are things that need to be proven before we can remove the think from the equation and consider Justin one of the um, upper class men of the quarterbacks in this league. All right, let's try this again. Now let's take a look at, you guys can tweet the show by the way, at Up and Adam Show. Uh, and we would love for you to do that. I love getting tweets during the program. So thanks for joining us this morning. Um, let's take a look at Detroit. Let's go up there to Motor City. People might think, oh, she's gonna bring up the question about Jared Goff, is he good? But that actually isn't my question for them. Start yelling at me, God. What's, the, What's question? the question? Get to the question. Come on. It's not about Jared Goff. Come on, I love, I love you. I just love everything about you. It's not about Jared Goff. It's not about the, you know, anything. He deserves a lot of credit. This Lions team does. They they finished in the mix while having a 30-second total get defense. To the, get to the question. Okay, I'll get to the question. My question for the Lions is this. Did they do enough to help the defense? The defense was so terrible. Listen, take a look at here. They made some big moves, okay? These are the defensive additions. Landing C.J. Gardner-Johnson in free agency to get coroners Cameron Sutton and Emmanuel Mosley, and they address all three levels of the defense in the draft. They get their mammoth linebacker Jack Campbell out of Iowa in the first. They got it, Brian Branch, who I love, the first little friend of the show, DB, out of Bama. That's a second rounder for them. And a big nose tackle, Broderick Martin out of Western Kentucky. That they took in the third round. But their decisions weren't non-controversial, okay? There were people questioning the move to draft running back um, Gibbs out of Alabama, 12th overall, with cornerback Gonzalez on the board. Gonzalez, of course, went to the Patriots. So, or, I don't know, like, do you want to draft a linebacker like Campbell when there were other premium positions available, question mark? We will see how the moves pan out. But if this Lions defense, man, if they're in the, if they're even in the middle of the pack when it comes to the whole league, it, in, at any point this season, and this offense, which was top five, continues to be top five the way it did during that seven and two stretch that they had to end the year, I think there's a really good chance we do see the Lions claim their first division title since 1993. And I believe, Connor, tell me if I'm wrong, that the Lions' odds are over at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. If you want to get down on it early and have a little fun, the Lions looking down upon everybody else below them in the NFC North, including the Packers. So the Packers, they're going through, ma I mean, they're going through it. They're going through major transition right now. Aaron Rodgers is gone. Uh, but it doesn't mean they're going to be irrelevant this year, right? This What's is the a question? question? Well, it's a, it. Hold on, it's a franchise that's had five losing seasons, guys. Only five losing seasons in 31 years. So what's the question? Get to it. The question is pretty obvious. What is Jordan Love? Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me no more. Okay, what is Jordan Love? He's probably the biggest mystery. I would, I would uh, behoove you. What is that? <laughs> what? I would like you to find a bigger NFL mystery this year and tweet me at Up and Adam Show. What is a bigger mystery? Jordan Love is it? The question is clear. 
Okay, so stop yelling. The question's clear. I think people are, though, are underestimating the impact that the answer might have. There were celebrations. There were, like, there was confetti and T-shirt guns around the NFC North when Rodgers was traded to New York. But fans did not learn anything from Favre to Rodgers in that situation that happened. Come on, I'm not saying Love will be as good as Rodgers, but he's a, he's a talented guy, okay? He's a good quarterback. He went in the first round for a reason, and this roster still has a ton of juice. This standoff doesn't happen between Rodgers and the, or between the Packers and the Jets. The, the, the trade doesn't happen unless the Packers are completely comfortable with what they've got. And Goody pulled off a complete overhaul of Love's weapons, okay? He snags a receiver, Jaden Reed, in the second round. He gets a couple of tight ends. He got Tucker Craft, Luke Musgraves, second, third round picks there and two uh, other receivers later in the draft. I'm just saying there's not one team in this division that has proven enough to overlook the Packers. I will say that. And I love the Lions. And the Vikings were really exciting last year. And Chicago's got the good things happening, good things coming. Nobody has made it a shut book case that the Packers are just not going to be at the top. So that's what I would say. The question is, all right, finally, there better be a question. Oh, there, oh, there is a question. And this is my, this is, I want to handle this a little gently. This is a tortured fan base. It really is. Last year's division champs, the Vikings. They've got to be so pissed. FanDuel Sportsbook, Lions at the top. Jared Goff led Lions are leading. Like, what are we doing here? It was a big year for Minnesota last year. It's an even bigger one in 2023. They have not won back-to-back -back NFC North titles since 2008 2009. Get to the question. Come on, Jay. So, you just throw a paper ball at me? Oh my God, I was in flashbacks to seventh grade Matthew Nearman. He used to wear a Brett Favre jersey. We're not going down that thing. This kid used to wear a Packers jersey and he used to throw things at me in class. So this one's for you. About the Vikings, though. My question for Minnesota is. Get to it. Are the, are the Vikings good or are they good? How, what, 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 what is the good? Yeah. Listen, despite their 13 and four record, the analytics did not love the Vikings last year and the Giants bounced them in the first round in the playoffs. I don't know if I've ever seen a 13 team win get so little love. I hate it for you. But before we pin it all on Kirk Cousins, the passing game was the biggest strength of this team last year. This team's biggest issue came in the run game. They were 27th, and by the way, on defense, where the, only the Lions were worse. And they weren't able to do a ton to improve this offseason because they only had six picks in the draft, and they lost some key vets like Patrick Peterson and Adam Thielen. So while uh, last year they were a trendy pick to win the North, and they followed through. This year, it seems like everybody's on the outs. If you look at the ups updated odds, and here they go, and you can see where it all shakes out. Over if you want to have some fun on FanDuel Sportsbook. This is after the draft now. The Vikings are tied with the Bears for the longest odds to win the division. Minnesota, are you going to take this disrespect? Are you going to fall apart after a rough end to this season? Or are you going to use this chip on your shoulder to shut everybody up? This is a contract year for Kirk Cousins. And if a playoff run doesn't happen, you may be closing in on that R word, the rebuild in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins historically does pretty well in a contract year, so we'll see how it goes. But those are those are my questions. Great questions. Thank Hi. you for the NFC North. All I wanted was for Giroud to yell at me. I said in the production meeting, if he starts yelling at me, it'll make my day, but he didn't. He's just smiling. He, and he says, you're lovely, you're beautiful. All right, we'll be back. We've got Sean Sharania on the program. You see him on Run It Back. You see him breaking uh, draft news for the NFL. And now he's here with us on Up and Adam. So we'll be back. My next guest is a comedian and actor. His news comedy special is entitled The Birds and the Bees, which was just released on YouTube. Please welcome the hilarious Master Brownie. How are you? Hi, Kay. How are you? I'm just here to learn about The Birds and the Bees. Tell me everything I need to know. Well, before I do that, I was watching <laughs> the Laker game last night, and they came on you. So and crazy. I was like, what's she doing at the game? She should be out. She should be home preparing for, no. for me as her guest. I had a late night. I had, a late, I had a late night. Those, listen, those uh, those Stella Artois big boys, they don't oh, drink themselves. Man. And then I, I went to In-N-Out. It's never a good night when you go to In-N-Out. No, no, You're no. You're getting that double-double with those terrible fries In-N-Out has. I said it. The problem with having a few drinks is that then it leads to uh, a few burgers, and then it leads you know, to going home. And then on just, the lips. <laughs> oh, telling you, telling you. Losing weight is tough in that sense. <laughs> no, you don't need to. I do. No, but the Lakers game was super fun. So you were watching. What a game. It was back and forth. It was crazy. I tweeted. I said, this is like the Hagler-Hearns fight, which <laughs> makes me old.
No, I know Hagler Hearns. You know, because sure, you're smart. You know course. these things. You you study hit, hit, boxing history. No, nobody was uh, hitting shots, though. I was nope. Bo- like the first half, I was like, does somebody want to like hit, make one through the bucket? What's going on here? Yeah, and it was like, uh, uh, you know, they had to bring in the, the backup sh- uh, players to, to, to do the shots. I don't know much about that. That's what Shams is here for. You're here to talk to me a little bit about your background, but also your connection to sports. I know you're a Cowboys fan. Yes. And I understand you've got a little, uh, a little something, a little uh, Hearns Hagler going on with Jerry. Yeah, I, you know, my problem is that I'm just, uh, they got my name misspelled, Jabroni. That's fine. Um, oh, no, is it spelled okay. wrong? No, it's fine. Oh, it's, the, it happens. Where? No, it, before. We'll it's okay. It, it happens now. all the time. No, that's Listen, her, that's no it's fine. okay. Listen, here's the thing. Um, I came to America late 70s. Cowboys were America's team. I became a fan of the Cowboys. Um, Tony Dorsett. Danny White. Of course. The coach, Tom Landry. Where this did is you fantastic. Live? I lived in Northern California in San Francisco where I saw uh, Joe Montana throw the pass to Dwight Clark for the catch. It was heartbreaking. I was a kid. It wasn't fair. They shouldn't do that. But you were still a kids. Cowboys fan. I mean, I was Montana cow- was doing his thing. Uh, yeah, Joe Montana. I'm like, come on, dude. You can't do that. Anyway, so Everson Walls. I got, you know, the poster. Anyway, the point is. Jerry Jones bought the team, and he fired Tom Landry right away. And I think it made me lose. It was it was a moment of like, oh my God, there's no loyalty. Oh, yeah. And I, it broke my heart. Your innocence was taken. And I've had it out for Jerry Jones ever since. So if he's watching, <laughs> well, you broke my innocence, Jerry Jones. You you he reminds oh, me of Jr. from. From Dallas, remember Dallas? Did yeah, you know no, yeah. I don't. How do you know all these? No, I'm just know. pretending. Oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, to be yeah, good yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, so, so he t- he stole your innocence. He but stole you my innocence. still remained a sports fan. Yes. You went to the University of California. Yeah. You're a Cal Bear guy. Yes. You and Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows. You both liked your, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Here's here's where again anybody who's out there watching this who who's sometimes you're reminded that you're getting older. I was watching Jared Goff one time because uh, as a Cal fan, you're always let down. We, yeah. we never, they never come through. But I was watching Jared Goff throwing these bombs, and I go, "Whoa, who's this guy?" And I look him up. I go, "This is our new quarterback. This is freshman year. His freshman Got year. It. This is our new quarterback. Who's this guy?" He was born in 1993, it's which the is the year I graduated Cal. It's I go, he could be my son. It literally makes my skin crawl to meet these guys, and they're like, who's? They don't even. They don't. They don't know who Tom Landry is. They don't know who. I know. Uh, Tony Dorsett. They're like, huh? And I'm like, what is happening in this world? Shouldn't there be a history class of some sort? I, I think that'd be a great. You should talk to Jerry Jones about that. I should talk to Jerry Jones about implementing the football history class, and so we could all talk about old players. <laughs> <laughs> You're a comedian. Yes. Uh, uh, you had a lot of success, and yes. I want to ask you about a guy who wants to have success yes. in your field. Like it's easy. Tom uh-huh. Brady thinks he's just gonna take these seven Super Bowl wins and walk into the Comedy Cellar or the Laugh Factory and ball out. It's it sounds. You know, all these people think that like I it's mean, not easy. It, it's a little insulting. <laughs> People retire, they're like, I'm just going to be a comedian. Really? You know, it's like, you can't just become a comedian. Although he's Tom Brady. So he'll, he'll get the stage time. It's like, how much trauma do you have? Check. How much, like, how can you fucking do but this? But he's Tom Brady. The problem with Tom Brady, so he's such a, he's so perfect that, like, he, what's he going to go up on stage and be like, so today I woke up, there was a hair out of place. What's up with that? I don't know. You know? You know, he needs to be, he needs to, we need to see the real Tom. You understand what I'm saying? When yeah. he's on stage, I want to see Tom getting into, like, the, the, the real the real stuff, like, like, you know how hard it is to be Tom Brady and then go out and there's Giselle and you're like, No, it's God, so unrelatable. I'm not good enough for you. You know what I'm saying? What style of, of comedy, like, you're a very physical comedian. I've watched some yeah, of your yeah. stuff. I you're all over the place. I, I don't know if Tom's going to do that. Yeah. What sort of stylistic approach should he take? What kind I of think, I think he should be a little deadpan. He should be a little bit, <laughs> I, think, I think he should do, because you wouldn't expect that, right? I mean, he is a little deadpan. When he talks, he's not the most... He's not the most uh, uh, animated guy, yeah. but he should do like he should do self-deprecating. Like he, when he holds the mic, he'd be like, "Is it just me, or does this mic feel a little deflated?" You know? Like, oh, it's a flow. That's gonna but up bump. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Go into that world. You know, because uh, he's got you got to point out your vulnerabilities. That's what people want. Gosh, on stage. you went up after Jerry Jones and Deflate Gate. The NFL people that are watching this from Park <laughs> Avenue not yeah, enjoying like, it. What? Um, so you think he should go out and he should just yeah? That that's that's good advice, but. I, I think about him walking into like you're at the comedy store tonight, right? Yeah. So and I, I don't I know a little bit about that world and there's like a pecking order and there's yeah. rules and yeah. there's like integrity of the game. Yeah. Tom Brady walks in there. How how does that work if you know if it's you know 
Jeselnik and, and I don't even know Whoever, who, like, and you. Yeah. Well, let me first of all tell you, the, the funny thing is, I think the reason people, a lot of these people that retire pick comedy is because you really don't need any talent. Because <laughs> no, really, because like if because they're not coming out like I want to be a musician because that would mean learning how to play an instrument. But comedy, they go, I just take a microphone and go up there and tell some jokes. Yeah, I'm a funny guy. Let me do it. Now that's why everyone thinks they can do it. But you're right. Once Tom Brady shows up at the club, the fact is, if he, if Tom Brady showed up at the club, tell uh, me, tell me what would, would happen. The, because the pe because it's, the, it's called bumping. You show up, you're like. Oh, yeah. hey. Like I'm, Chappelle shows up and, you're, and if you're John Mulaney, you're like, I'm great, but see ya. Well, I don't know if Chappelle okay, John, sorry. John Mulaney, I don't know. I, I don't know if John's watching this, but I don't think, I don't think you'd be bumped John by Chappelle. John Mulaney wouldn't be bumped by Dave Chappelle? I don't think John Mulaney's kind of, he's a big, he's big time now. You know, like, you know, you would have to like, you would have to, I, I, I think what would happen is, this is what would happen, is Dave might go up to John and be like, John, I need to go because I got to, I gotta, uh, you know, go to this. I got this other party I gotta go to, and then John, I go for it. Who's unbumpable? Unbumpable is uh, well, uh, Chappelle would be unbumpable. That's what I yeah. So if Tom Brady, sh let's say Tom Brady shows up, most of us that are on that lineup, they'd be like, "Hey, Tom Brady's here." And by the way, the <laughs> fact is, we would all want to watch it. We'd be like, "What?" Really? You'd give up your spot oh, yeah, for Tom of Brady? Of course, I want to watch but this you're disaster. Saying, but you just, be you, a disaster. you just did an entire a beautiful speech about how being a comedian is an art. It takes a lot of work, and some some jerk who retires shouldn't be able to come in. You'd give him your spot. Well, and we take more joy. It's called Schadenfreude. Have you heard yeah, of this? Heard of, heard yeah, we take more joy in watching his pain of trying to do what we do. Because I think a lot of us would be like, oh, you think you can do it? Let's see you do it. And then I think we'd just all be sitting in the back. And then another comic would walk up and be like, what's going on? Why are we running late? Tom Brady's up. What? Yeah, he's trying to do jokes. <laughs> what? Tom Brady? Yeah. That would be, how entertaining would that be for us? It would. I just, I think, I, I still can't believe that you don't think that Chappelle would go in there and paper covers rock uh, uh, John Mulaney. And then he I don't, I, listen, what, I is don't, Colin Jost holding his ground to shave Chappelle too? What are we my, talking about my here? My point is, I haven't looked at the comedian rankings recently. Yeah. Are um, there, but, but there, there are, be, right? There but there are be. comedian like, rankings. FanDuel should do <gasps> odds on comedians bumping or bombing. Come on, FanDuel, get with it. I love this. Now, the, I, dare I ask, I don't know your answer to this, uh -oh. the Women's FIFA World Cup, which we love, is coming yes. up in July. Yes. I heard you have an issue with American World Cup chants. Well, first of all, I'm happy that at least we have the Women's World Cup team is, is a team that has a chance, so this is good. Because okay. Team USA, you root for them, but it's just, you know, you have to have a backup. But with... The team, the, but but our chant is horrible. You do, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm Iranian American. Okay, I root for Team Iran and it's got Team Meli and U Team USA. I have the same thing. It's like I, I root for US, but Poland, like that's you know. Yeah, I'm like okay, who? Uh, okay, maybe France, maybe you know uh, yeah. Brazil. So, but the chant we have is is really bad. It, the chant is, uh, I believe. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. I, I believe, believe that, that we, we will win. win. Now you see, that's not even committing. It's saying, I believe we might, if things go right, if oh. the world's aligned, I believe, I'm not quite, it's very, like, very American, everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I believe that we win, but if we don't, it's fine. We don't have to <laughs> it's okay. win. It's okay. You like, tried your it, hardest. And these other teams you've seen, like the other teams, oh, they yeah. we will kill you and eat you for lunch, eat you for lunch. You're like, oh God, we're gonna lose today. So you gotta come, the fans need, we need something a little more aggressive. Do you have something in mind? Um, that I believe that something? you'll let us win or we will attack your country oh God. and make <laughs> you. Just took a turn for them. You know, I was just saying, you can, we have a good military. Let's just use that to our advantage. It should be in the, it should be in the thing. It okay. should be intimidation. Well, talk to me about something that uh, many people find intimidating, birds and bees, right? The birds and that the bees. That conversation is a little cringy, but what do you got? This is your sixth hour long stand-up special. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So the birds and the bees my new comedy special, uh, it's, I put it on YouTube, because I was like, I've been on Netflix, I've been on Showtime, I've been, every, the beauty of YouTube, you put it out there, and you see the numbers, and you read the comments, yeah. I've been look like, at look at me, there you go, and they got the name right, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, look, we got it right, finally. You got it right, and. Thanks, uh, thanks and, for being cool about that, sorry. Well, of course, come on, I'm, I'm used to this stuff. Uh, oh. I had the Iron Sheet call me Jabroni. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the birds and the bees is, is the birds and the bees. I had to give the birds and the bees talk to my kids. You come from an immigrant background. I come from an immigrant background. Yeah. Our parents never did birds and the bees. Not a chance. My parents never, I've never, not the word, not the idea, no. never been discussed. My dad Ever. was like, son, in our culture, we don't have birds and bees. We have lawyers <laughs> and doctors. Just be one and stop asking questions. But my kids, I stumbled into the birds and the bees. My daughter was eight. My son was 10. We were watching a TV show, and there was, like, sexual content in it.
Not, yeah. it, it was like a regular show. It was like Hard ABC. to avoid these days. Yeah, yeah. It was an ABC show, family show, blackish. And the very first scene of the whole show, there's something that happens. And again, anyone who's got boys and girls will tell you, boys spaced out. My son saw the scene, didn't even really? know. He's just like, uh. My daughter, <laughs> sharp, CSI, CIA, FBI. Yeah. She's just like, what just happened? Connecting dots. On TV, I'm like, what do you mean? What just happened? I go, on TV or in the world? In the world? Because I was trying to avoid the conversation. And she's like, no, on TV, what just happened to that kid? And I was like, oh, yeah, nothing. And then the very next scene, they keep talking about this like thing, and I'm like, ah. Uh. And then I ended up explaining to her, and I think I've, I've, um, the same way Jerry Jones messed up my, God, my, my life. I think trauma. That I've, I've traumatized my daughter. Now. We've done pack this. Yeah, there's We've a lot of. Well, how the conversation go? Well, the conversation went. So I don't know how much you can say on the show, but oh, the, it was, it was the what the boys and the girls do. Right. Once you get older, you experiment with your body, right? Yeah. And the boy was about. The boy was in high school, and he was about to experiment oh, with his boy. body. Can we say the M word? Is that okay? I don't know. I, I won't say it. Not. Let's not. Let's not. Pre 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 and then my. See, I my, come from a family that doesn't. Well, say then, like then my then my eight year old daughter goes, "What just happened?" And then and then she, and then the next scene came up again, and and I'm trying to avoid the conversation. She goes, "No, what just happened with the son?" Because the, the d dad walks in, the son's about to do something, and the dad walks out. Yeah. So anyway, and then finally I go, well, you know, sometimes when oh, boys are in high school, they just squeeze their pee-pee just a little bit. And then she goes, what? <laughs> I go, just a little, just a, not a poquito. And then she goes, <laughs> and that was it. That was my so birds and the bees. Well? I don't know if that's the birds and the bees. It's sort of like the birds or the bees. Like there's the birds. Yeah, that's the, that little... was trying to avoid the birds and the yeah, bees. Yeah, why don't you just go with the stork story like everyone else? That's they're what I, I they, plan. They were... If I ever have kids, it's the stork story till you figure it out. No, you can't. They're eight and ten. They know there's this that. Eight and ten is so. I don't even think I knew what sex was for a very long time. I remember I have, no one told me anything for a very long time. I didn't tell them about sex. I told them about the M word. Okay, we get it. We were both, <laughs> let's move on. Ooh, check it out, guys. It's on YouTube and it's, it's very fun. It's a fun funny. show. Check it um, out. With the popularity of Instagram yes. and TikTok, yes. uh, how is promoting your comedy uh, special, special after special, how has it sort of evolved? I'm so curious. It's sort of in your own hands, you're saying. Well, it's so crazy. It's also about like the world we live in now, right? So my kids are on TikTok. My son is now 14. Um, they know all about it. TikTok is like, what, three-second video. So like when yeah. I first started doing stand-up, 25 years ago, they said you need to record a one-hour comedy special. You put it on HBO, people discover you, your career takes off. Yeah. And a few years later, they go, you gotta take five minutes of the one hour, you put it on YouTube, people discover you, career takes off. <laughs> then they go, you gotta take one minute of the five minutes, put it on Instagram, people discover you, career takes off. Now they go, you take three seconds of the of the one yeah. minute, put it take put it together. <laughs> and I go, three seconds, all I can say is hello, goodbye. My son goes, that's fantastic, that's perfect. <laughs> and then I go, how low is the attention span of your generation? And he goes, what? So he couldn't even last three seconds. Is it true that the attention span is just completely shot? I watched these girls. I was at some school event, and these girls were like waiting and they're getting ready to watch this thing. We're all sitting. We're all sitting, and these girls had their phones, and it was like tick tack, it was like a video game. And I go, are they yeah. playing a video game? I go, no, they're watching videos. They're not That's watching crazy. anything. They go, they go, watch a second, heart move, heart tick. I go, my God, everyone's gonna have arthritis in the future. Because of TikTok, it was going to be like this. Of that. Everyone's going to be walking around like that. You'd be like, "Yeah, hang loose." You're like, "No, hang no, TikTok." No, that's horrifying. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so you did this at the Comedy Store. Yeah, we filmed it at the Comedy Store. That's pretty special. It's it's amazing. Comedy Store is legendary. Mitzi Shore, who mm -hmm. uh, was was Polly Shore's mother, she was the owner of the Comedy Store. Uh, everyone's gone through the Comedy Store, and it's an amazing place. And it was. She wanted me to wear a turban when I first started, because I'm Middle Eastern. And back then, she was like, you should wear the outfit. I go, what outfit? She goes, you know, the hat and the gown. I go, what hat and gown? She goes, you know, the hat and the gown. I go, turban? She said, yeah. I go, OK. Because I, I wanted to be a regular. I didn't say no. And then I went to the so back hall. No, I went oh. to the back hall. I'm like, what did I just agree to do? And then it became this long two-week process of me trying to get out of the turban and them thinking I'm going to wear the turban. And finally, I was like, listen, if I wanted to wear the turban, like, like some terrorists might find out I'm making fun of them and come blow up the club. And they're like, oh, don't wear the turban. Just wear like something comfortable. That's how you went and did that. Yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> I leaned into my Middle Eastern background, Kay. Speaking of your Middle Eastern background, yes. you, are, um, you have immigrant parents. Yes. And you, that's a very unique experience. Yes. What would you make of that? Well, you grew up with Polish parents. Yes. They are um, very cutthroat. They're very, there's no. They have listen, high expectations for no reason. Lawyer, doctor, engineer. <laughs> they love, listen, they love us. Don't get me wrong. But it's just a different world. Like I have. It really is. Listen, we, 
kids run the world now. We didn't run the world, all right? Like, what, back, like now, when I drive my kids to a sporting event, yeah. I'll stay at the sporting event. It revolves event. around them. Yeah, I'll watch the game, and then I'll drive them home. Back when I was a kid, they'd drop us off and sometimes pick us up. Yeah. They wouldn't even pick me up. My dad would drop me off, leave, everyone's gone home. I'm outside with my baseball bat, my little mitt, going like, where are they? Yeah. My dad would show up, where were you? Oh, I was home watching the football game. You should have seen it. They're professional. They're much better than you. <laughs> like, thanks, Dad. Or, but this is like L.A., too. There's an extra layer no, to that with raising your... But I'm saying you're raising your kids in L.A. Oh, forget it. Oh, my God. I, I, I always say this. I go, when I was a kid, I used, I used to play with the kids of my parents' friends. Now I play with the parents of my kids' friends. And it goes with so what? Crazy. It's crazy. I remember we would, I would have, we would just have parties, like these raging Polish parties, uh, you know, for any event. And my, my, for 10 hours, my parents had no idea where I was. It was like they strapped a pillow to me and said, good luck. We would be upstairs doing crazy stuff, like American Gladiator breaking things. Like, no, they were having, they were living their lives. They were down there celebrating and having fun. And now they, that does not happen. They did not know. They did not care. Now when it's I a first... sleep schedule, gotta go. And Dude. I'm like, what? Even eating, like now, we're, we're like, you should eat better. When I was a kid, we came to America, I discovered Twinkies. I'd go grocery shopping with my mom. She'd buy all the food for the house. I'd buy a whole other cart of junk food. I, my, yeah. my welcome into America was taking the Twinkies and, and <laughs> chewing off that little layer and then licking that, <laughs> licking the cream and going like, welcome to America. Oh, okay. This was, is that, the best country ever. That was your moment. Um, yes. But do you have your work ethic from, from them? I think so. so. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's not work ethic as much as like you better succeed or, or <laughs> we're going to disown you. You know, um, I always say I, I say when I first started, as, by the way, when I started this, this wasn't this was com comedy wasn't a, a thing. Yeah. Like I said, I was a disappointment to my father, disappointment to my mother. I was a disappointment to the entire Persian community. I'm not kidding. We go to parties. You hear and they're like, did you did you see? They'd be like, that's Joe Brani's son. He's almost a drug dealer. No, I have the same thing. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm not kidding. My yeah. brother, a lawyer. My sister I, does something so medical, whatever, that I can't even tell you what it is. I can't, and it was, oh, she's, you know, she's messing around. She's trying to be on a microphone. She's trying to be on TV. Like, she's an idiot. Like, she doesn't know what she's doing for the longest, just to cut, not, not anymore, but for a very long time. It's a disappointment. And I was like, I'm successful. It's just a little different, but it is. A, it was a bit of a, yeah. Because they can't grasp it because they, they come it's from different. the old school. Like, there's certain jobs you should have. Because, listen, I always say, or they want what's have. best for you, yeah. right? Yes. But because of that, great. yes. But they also instill in you this work ethic, like you said. Like I never, I, there was not a moment in my life where I was like, oh, maybe I'll just like stay home, play video games, no, and yeah. uh, you know, and, and you know, whatever. Just money will come somehow. Yeah. I was like always running, even if it was like working it. I've I've had all kinds. I worked at Domino's Pizza. I worked at Sabaro's Pizza. I've done all Which kinds of pizza. Which is better? Well, Sabaro's. <laughs> Which worked, one should I eat less of? I worked at Sabaro's one month. I got Employee of the Month. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was the only guy who spoke English. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which one? Which one should I not eat? Of uh, those don't two? eat. Well, Domino's. You got to have Domino's because they deliver it. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, so you, you know that you, you know drive that the Sabaros you, told you to go to. You Sabaros? know the inner workings of how things go. With oh, they're places. all horrible. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, but I did learn how to, the, you know, throw. Hey, no, like, you don't. I, you know, of course, I made a pizza. It's about a pizza. Did you dance while you made pizza? Can I just tell you something real quickly? Please. The beauty of being an immigrant, by the way, is you're always we're, we're always looking for connections. You got a cousin who's got this. You got a mother, yeah. the, 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 the uncle, the, the. So once I worked at Sabaros Pizza, like the first time I was like alone one night, I called my family. I go, listen, I'm at the pizza place I got free pizza so they all came and I gave them all I cooked them all pizza that's amazing it was amazing and then I worked at a place called boulangerie the, at the end of the day it was a it was a bread place they'd always be out of, it sounds like a lingerie place no, 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 I, was boulangerie. Like, I was like you invited everybody no, to no, they would have they would have extra bread left over oh, so they great. would send me home with loaves of bread that's amazing so it was funny so my dad it became his thing like when we'd have guests over as they were leaving like would you like some bread <laughs> they'd be they like just, sure they thought they could give him a piece of bread a give parting a, gift a little pumpernickel <laughs> <laughs> the days you're very, very <laughs> you have a great energy about you i can't I wait try. to watch the special yeah. check it out guys it's the birds and the bees i want to ask you about your dancing i was trying to when we were talking about the pizza oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. i asked you if you were dancing and wanted that you know yeah yeah no i did a, i did a show i did a show called the funny dance show i was a guest on it and they canceled it unfortunately it was on e i believe that's probably why they canceled it. I was on it. I don't even know what network it was. You but, were on E while you were doing it? Okay. No, no, I was yeah, on E. Ah. They said, hey, gay girl. But it was funny because I've Take always... Take that, Tom Brady. <laughs> I've wanted to... Uh, you know how Tom Brady wants to do comedy? Yeah. I want to dance and I want to sing. Well, I have to see the I want to be in the next Baz Luhrmann movie. Whoever, whoever the new 
singing, dancing director is. Okay. Put me in your movie. I can sing. I believe I can sing. Come on. And then I can dance. You can dance. sing. I can dance. Want me to? I will, yes. Oh, can we get you to dance? They, they asked me to do a football Let's dance. Let's do a dance! Touchdown dance. This is my touchdown okay, this dance. Okay, this is a Moz touchdown celebration. What would it look like? Go for it. Can I get some music or something? I, they're telling me you picked music. Yes, what I asked for What kind of music is I this? I asked for it. Well, I got to hear it. I can't. Well, I, I, okay. oh, do you hear it's, it? It's, oh, can we play I it in the studio? It. Okay, so I believe it's Middle Eastern music. Oh, so here I am. Studio. So, Kate, okay, just go with me. Okay, okay, so here we go. The ball, I, I do a one handed catch. It's yeah. going to be a one handed catch, right? Yeah. Right? One handed catch, and I, oh, and I'm in. Now you got to, you got to. <laughs> you see, like, you got to. Can I do it? With well, you? I think that's Indian, but that's can fine. I do I'm going to run. Yeah, you can do it just like this. Get your hand like this. And okay. then just drop it. Oh, that's not bad. And when. Then you go like this. Now I'm running. You see, now it's kind of running, man. It's got a little bit of everything, right? Now, hey, 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 hey. Who, don't forget the wave. Uh huh. Ding, 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 ding. Plug your special. Majabrani, because the birds are the bees. I'm dancing till you're watching it. Don't even watch it. Just click on YouTube and let it play. I need the algorithm. Go. We'll be back with Shams. Shams will be here to break down the, <laughs> who was Jordan Poole and why was he trending last night? We'll break it down. NBA style as you break it down to break. Unbelievable. I'm running out of breath. <laughs> Big news, hockey fans. Same game parlays are now available for all NHL games on FanDuel. Build quick and easy bets and enhance your game experience by combining props, spreads, totals, and more. Plus, you can also combine same game parlays with bets from other games to make a SGP plus and win even bigger. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and check out NHL same game parlays today. From hockey to the NBA, we've got Steve. I love Steve Kerr, Shams. I love Steve Kerr. Hey, Steve, I know you're out of the lineup sharing business, but is there... Would it's you... okay. Shams is in the lineup <laughs> sharing business. So, yeah. well, did you tell him? <laughs> uh, no, we have a special correspondent within our organization who, who shares, shares information with him, apparently. Boy, Shams, Shams, Shams. I love Steve Kerr. Shams on the show on Up and Adams. You can, of course, see him uh, on Run It Back right here on FanDuel TV. What'd you make of that? A little shout out. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's very rare. You know, all these coaches, they want to keep their lineups a secret going into these playoff games. And so I got wind of, of the Warriors' big change last night. Um, you know, Gary Payton, the second starting, it was, a, it, was, it, was, it was big news. And so I had to do what I had to do at that point. Uh, and you actually, you mentioned it to me. As I, I told you I was going to my first Lakers game. And I was like, what? My first question to Shams was, was not like, what? Tell me the keys to the game or give me some scoops. I go, where should I eat? What am I going <laughs> to eat? <laughs> I go, well, Shams, I, where I, do I eat? It sounds like you follow my advice. You either eat before or after, and you probably don't eat there. I mean, you, yeah. find, you find a spot. It sounded like you found a spot. I don't know where. You went somewhere. I saw you. I did all sorts. Oh, yeah, Instagram I went to in and out I went to in and out after. It was a terrible decision by me, but it was okay. Um, so you caught wind. It's like how you say you caught wind of something. Like a little bird came and chirped in your ear and told you about the lineup changes. When I got that text from you, I didn't even respond because I was like, I, what do I do with this information? I don't know what this... I don't know. Like, I don't know basketball well enough to even know what to do with this. Uh, the Lakers somehow still pulled it off. Do you have anything to say to Coach Kerr after last? night well I would just say I've got bodies everywhere you know I try to have spies everywhere I try to you know make sure I'm accounted for uh in yeah. different places so um I, I think that's you know sh shout out Steve Kerr you know definitely a fan of his I mean you're from Chicago you got to be a fan of Steve Kerr like that's I saw him right away and I was like Steve Kerr Chicago Bulls 90s <laughs> uh listen and speaking of that you said you have bodies everywhere it's true, and it's rubbing some people the wrong way because Steve Kerr isn't the only person to fall victim to your superhuman ability to break news over the past few weeks. You ruined, you ruined the NFL draft by oh, no. breaking a couple of oh, picks. No. You broke picks before Goodell took the stage, a major no-no, including number one overall pick Bryce Young. What was the reaction like from all involved? Well, okay, sometimes I have to come into your world, you know? So I, I just, I, I was chilling before, I think it was Celtics, Hawks, it was like 35 minutes before the game. Um, I was semi bored, but I was getting ready for the game. And, I was bored. You know, information just made its way to my phone. So, you know, at that point, I felt like the only responsible thing to do uh, was put it out. And so that's what I did. Um, it seems like the NFL fan base is very, very stringent when it comes to that, though. It seems yeah. like it's a no no, but 
Listen, I, I had to do it. You know, shout out Ian Rappaport. That's uh, someone who I have, I have a lot of respect for. When you and, say um, that, when you say that, what you do know. you mean? Because you know Ian's like, shout out Ian Rappaport. Because you, you say you love, but, but you're breaking news. My question would be. I have a lot of respect for him. No, like I respect what he does. And so I'm not trying to come come to his territory. You know, yeah. I'm sure if he had, if he was able to break that news, he would he would break it. But it looks like they've got them on, on a little bit of a, of, a, of a muzzle. So I would say. Oof. There's a boy. <laughs> they've got Ian Rappaport on a muzzle. Oh, boy. Shams. I would say this no, to no, any, with the draft. No, I, I know. To anybody who you, might say you, that you shouldn't be tweeting out these picks, I would say, what are you supposed to do? If it makes its way to you, like, what are you supposed to not give the information? That's what I would say. Any, what is Sham supposed to do? He's got to give the news when he sees it. Uh, and I thought it was great. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. But I do want to know, like, what is the line? Because you did the, you know, you did the presidential COVID diagnosis. Uh, would you, would you, if you got the scoop of who won the presidential election, would you, would you tweet that? I definitely would, for sure. I for sure would. You want to get but, all but, that but, political but, but Twitter? Happy, but but I'm happy that you support it because you if if Up and Adams and you guys support it, then that means you know I don't really care about outside opinions. That's right. So you want to come into I'm our cool NFL world? We're gonna give you a warm embrace, baby. You come right in here and you ruin everybody's day. <laughs> well, this is becoming an NBA show, so now I feel like you know we're kind of balancing each other out. You know, it's true. run it back, Up and Adams. It's kind of there's a good uh, you know synergy there right now. I think. But um, I, I think when, when, you, when you look at it, I feel like news is news. Um, obviously, my beat is the NBA. I love the NBA. That's what I do. That's my yeah. passion. But, you know, if I get wind of other things, you know, what about the I'm, next? I'm, not, I'm liable to tweet it. What about the next pope? Would you announce? Would you, would you beat the plume of smoke? Would you tell people who the pope was? Okay, do you have access to that information? <laughs> what about, the, what about the winner of Love Island? <laughs> uh, probably not. No? no? Well, I that... probably wouldn't. The, I, I I wouldn't go I wouldn't venture into 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 love you know let that be their thing that's their private business. Shabs loves love. How about succession spoilers? Would you tweet those? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, I dislike when people tweet out spoilers because what if you haven't seen the show? Then you kind of deprive the people that have. You spoil it for them. You ruin their day, ruin their night. They could have a plan with their with their significant other watching, to watch the what show. What if you're There's, a huge NFL fan and you're watching the show called the NFL Draft? What are you talking oh. about? I don't understand you, Shams. Well, you're going to find out in like 20 seconds anyway, if you're going to watch, or 30 seconds or 15 minutes. Uh, you know, but some people make plans, right? Like, I'm going to watch X show on Thursday. Like, people make plans, and so I want to be respectful of people's plans. Well, why didn't you break the Kentucky Derby news and who won the Kentucky Derby early? Where were you? Do you not have any... <laughs> because there? my people on the ground, like you, weren't hitting me up, so it's unfortunate. It's but, you know, was... you, Matt... You know, Marissa, Taylor, they weren't giving me, you know, they, they weren't looking out for me. With yeah, we were, we were very busy. We were very busy. Listen, this series has been all about the stars, right? LeBron, Steph, AD. Last night it was Lonnie Walker. I, I'm watching this happen, stealing the show. 15 points in the fourth quarter. He gets the Lakers the win. What do I need to know about Lonnie? And what was last night? Well, you, you want to root for him for sure because this is a guy, Kay, he started to begin the year. He was in the starting lineup. He was probably their third best scorer, their third best player in the initial part of the season. And then this is a Lakers team that made some trades at the trade deadline, got in different pieces. He goes to the bench, and then he's really relegated to not playing much at all in these playoffs. Um, he barely played in their first round series against Memphis. He didn't play at all in game one. Then he plays some, some garbage time minutes in game two plays really well and that just goes to show it's like a life lesson you never know when the eyes when the cameras are on you the eyes are on you you always want to be ready he was ready in game two he gets an opportunity in game three and last night in game four and he shines and i think is just a great example of staying ready being professional uh, because at, at any given moment your number could be called and so it's your it could be your time to step up i love that so the lakers they're three and one over the warriors then the same thing happened with the heat talk to kenny smith about how he loves miami i'm sure you had the scoop on that I'm sure you, uh, Kenny Smith should have said you were the one that called TMZ on I know his nothing ass this about last Miami. weekend. I know nothing about um, Miami, Kay. But the, the, the heater up on the Knicks 3-1, too, which I hate because you know I like the Knicks. I like that Randall. I like that IQ kid. I like it all. Which team do you think has a better chance of making a comeback, Warriors or Knicks? I think the Warriors because they've done it before, 3-1. Um, they've got a lot of championship pedigree. They've got championship history. So for me, for sure the Warriors, that's a scenario I could see potentially, although the Lakers have the edge. With, with the Heat Knicks series, I just, it's tough to see because right now Jimmy Butler's been by far the best player in this series. Ooh. He's been one of the best players in the playoffs. Um, and I think this is the second straight series against Milwaukee and Giannis. He was the best player in that series. In this series against the Knicks, he's the best player. 
and the way he's playing. Okay, this is a guy who shot under two three-pointers a game in the regular season. Now it's playoff time. Everyone's scouting report says Jimmy Butler can't shoot threes, and he's shooting over four threes a game, almost hey. 40% from three. So Jimmy Butler's playing at another level, and you can clearly see he's turned it on when the lights are on, and, and he's playing at a super high level. We love to see it. I like that Jimmy Butler. Um, wish he did more for the Bulls when he was there for those years. That's okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about this. Give me the latest on this Ishbia thing. Joker got fined, what, 25K? And then but people want Ishbia to have a little, uh, you know, something, something for his role in all this. Anything there? Uh, nothing that I've heard, but I think with Matt Ishbia, it is interesting. The one thing I think about, if this was just a normal fan, what would the reaction be? Would there be something, that, would the fan press charges? Like, what would happen if this was just a normal fan? It wasn't the owner of an NBA team. This is a guy who's, who's worth almost $5 billion. I don't think, you know, he's clearly not gonna make a scene of this. He tweeted out yesterday, I want everyone to focus on game five. I don't want Jokic to get suspended. And I think that went a long way in, in you know, in any decision the league was gonna make. I don't think a suspension was ever really in play. Uh, but I think everyone just wants to move on, get to game five. I, 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 don't know, I don't know where Matt Ishby is going to be seen tonight. Maybe I need to figure that information out. Will he be courtside? Where will he sit? Um, but I think in Phoenix, he's going to sit exactly in his seats as normal, which, which is what I would expect in Game 6. <laughs> Shams, are you going in any game soon? Um, I think I'm going to be in Chicago for the next week or so. Uh, NBA Draft Combine next week in the Shy, so Ooh. I'm going to be here. Ooh, <laughs> that's super fun. I love that. All right, Shams, we love you. When you are bored, you break news. That's your new tagline. Whenever we have Shams on the show, it's when he's bored, he breaks the news. When I'm bored, I like, I don't even know. I put a face mask on. And like you go sleep. to Lakers games. I know. No, no, How's your experience? Shams, it's a lot. Very different from a Knicks game. Very, I, I've never been to a Bulls game. Ever. Stop it. I've never this, been to this, a Bulls this game. This is a sin. This is, <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what to say. Listen, they've got a nice FanDuel sports book there thing. There's like you've got all the access, but you've I, I don't you never asked me to go, so that's on you. All right, fine. Maybe Here's when you're bored, you should take Kay. me to Bulls, Bulls game. Bulls game, 2023, 2024 season. FanDuel make it happen. Shout out FanDuel. Shout FanDuel. out FanDuel TV. Shout out Richard. Wow. I'll make it happen, but FanDuel, wow. you know. Wow, wow, wow. That they've just, got the I plugs. Got, that, I don't that got that any just went. plugs. Shams, we appreciate you. Enjoy all of the action. I. Uh, you're, you're, you're great. You're just great. We love you. We love Shams on the show. A warm embrace into the NFL world. What is he supposed to do? Not break news? We'll be back. Yeah. Welcome back to Up and Adams. How much time do we got? 30 seconds. Uh, big thanks to Moz for joining our show. You guys can check out a special on YouTube. It is called Birds and Bees. Uh, and thanks to Shams for hopping on and uh, explaining that, you know, Ian Rappaport's in a muzzle. That's the breaking news here today. And uh, Jimmy Butler, nobody's playing better than Jimmy Butler, except Devin Booker. Why does everyone hate Devin Booker? Get over it! All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Gronk and his mom, here. Oh, Gronk and his mom, great! <laughs>